<laughs> Hi, I'm Milton Chang of Bonsai Heirloom. It's a hot summer day, so I'm squinting a little bit. Today I will turn this discarded oak tree into a bonsai. Uh, I bought it from a friend who dug up from his backyard and kept it in this growing pot. Well, not this growing pot, actually it's a five gallon growing pot uh, for a long time. And he just didn't know what to do with it. It's very untidy, unwieldy. And so when he moved, he, he uh, sold it to me at a very reasonable price. And I uh, chopped it up quite severely with my uh, reciprocal saw, uh, got rid of quite a bit of roots and so forth to create room for the soil. And uh, it has been growing for about six months. And you can see a lot of uh, leaves came out. And I let this weed grow to demonstrate that you don't really have to pay much attention to your trees because you have time to uh, make up for it by when you're ready to work on it. So with that in mind then, we'll begin uh, working on this tree and stay tuned, tuned to the end because at the end I will summarize the key points, uh, recap anyway, and then show you what's important. And also I try to find a bonsai pot that's appropriate uh, to simulate what I will eventually put it in to give you an idea of what the tree will look like eventually. And what we will do is that we will um, show you this tree every six months to a year from now on for the next several years. So you can see how a tree progresses from a stump uh, to um, a, a finished nice bonsai. And I think the point I wanna make is I tend to grow, use larger material because you can start with a little uh, sapling. It takes time to grow. And then when you're ready to train it, it takes another three to five years to look decent. Whereas this one, if I give it three to five years, it will look like a pretty decent bonsai. So with that in mind, then I'll start working and um, show you what I do. And the first step is to take it out of the pot and scrape off the soil from the top because the tree begins with the bottom. You can't change the bottom. So you wanna make lemon nay with lemon by orienting the roots and so forth that the tree to optimize what you would do with a given the roots that you cannot change. And then the rest of it you can change as you, you know, let it grow or cut back. So with that in mind then, I will take it out of the pot. So you see, I planted in nothing than just ordinary uh, mixture of garden soil with compost. In a sense, these are redwood chips and uh, kept them moist. And that seemed to grow really fine. You can see the bottom after six months, already significant amount of new roots coming out from the old stumps. There's still some old stumps left, which I need to cut off to create room for the bonsai pot. And then I'll pull the sweet off, I don't need it. But I just wanted to show you it can be quite, uh, doesn't require much effort. So as I said, you need to see, start with the, a bonsai start with the bottom because that's the root, root age, because that's you, something you cannot change, uh, whereas the top you can change, uh, accommodating by cutting back and let it grow. See, it's uh, really not very um, uh, big deal in terms of uh, uh, careful, uh, because the tree will grow very vigorously. You can see a lot of fibrous roots uh, from the loose uh, medium. And so if I cut off here, to fit the bonsai pot, there's plenty of feeder roots to keep the tree alive and compensate it by cutting off the top. You see, this is all uh, heavy root wood that is not gonna fit into a bonsai pot. So I have no choice but to get rid of it. Look at that. You can hear solid wood. But well, what's really important to see see the root age, if you look at all my bonsai, they all have beautiful root age because that's the first thing I pay attention to, making sure they radio out. Like you see these little trees come out and you see how uh, this acorn is starting to root. And that's because the squirrels are burying all the acorns. That's why the volunteer oak around the oak tree, the squirrels store them away and then uh, they, they root and become, uh, uh, they sprout and become a tree. 
So you can see uh, I need to get a reciprocal saw and cut off significant amount of this because this is the root began and there's plenty of fibrous roots and I can't have the, hard, uh, the solid wood to take up the limited space and in the bonsai pot. So that's what I have to do. So when you dig up a tree, you cannot, um, when you want to repot a tree, you cannot instantaneously cut back. You need to plant it in a big pot, let the top uh, fibrous roots grow so that when you cut off this, they can support the tree. So uh, let me clean off the top a little bit so I can see where I'm going. Look at that, here's another one. The, the, the squirrels have really been busy, they're already rooted. So there are plenty, uh, like this year, so we got a lot of rain and there's lots and lots of uh, volunteer oak tree seedlings that you can use to start your own bonsai with. Although I think you can just go to the garden and dig them. So like this is a, probably a 10 year old seedling that pop out of the garden. I want to get to the, where the roots starting to come out and that's where the beauty is inside a bonsai pot. You can see this root coming out and it goes down and it goes sideways. I probably cut off this root eventually. Uh, so let this part go down instead of radio out instead of going to the side, but all in due time, you can, Rome is not conquered in one day. You have to be patient uh, to think of it, get to where you want to go in stages. You can see uh, how the roots emergence from the, the front, uh, from the trunk, so that you can make sure they grow out radially. So now let's study this tree. I think this is a nice root in a pot. Probably this may be the front because there's a little bit more interesting feature up front and then this one can come out to the side. So what I would emphasize now is to look at this tree from this angle. And I can't see that too well, so let me cut off some of this so we can see the rest of it. The rough idea is that I clean off all the top soil, the soil on the top, so I can see where the roots are coming out. I wanna make sure the roots are radially going out. Although I will not cut off the ones that are going to the side at this point because I need all the roots to feed the tree after I do a severe cutting at the bottom. And so uh, the main thing is I want to identify the front first. You can see this tree has an interesting root coming out to the side. And then there's a branch coming out, which would be nice to be a little bit to the side and then going up so that the tree, when you look at it, it's got some depth in terms of the, uh, the trunk. And so uh, what I'll do is uh, today, I will cut off the bottom because I can't afford to waste the limited space in the pot bonsai pot. And not worrying about killing the tree because there's plenty of feeder roots up here to feed the tree. And when I cut off most of the leaves, uh, the branches uh, that will compensate for the less available water through the roots. So with that in mind then, uh, I need to see this thing clearly before I make the final decision. So let me cut off some of the branches that are obviously not gonna be used. So that's what I'll do next. So it's again, again a fairly quick process and I can make the decision fairly quick because the tr uh, trunks coming out of certain spaces would never be right. And when in doubt, leave a little bit of a green uh, so that makes sure in a sense of a, there's not a stump left uh, at the end of a knob, uh, a bud. Like this could be going out, so I need a potentially a longer branch. So I'll keep cut out a little bit less.
now we can potentially, we can uh, see this a little bit clearer, not quite yet, uh, to decide what really the, is the front and what direction of the tree to, to train. When in doubt, leave a little bit just in case you need it. Okay, so now if you look at this tree, um, at this angle, this is the front. Uh, you can see the trunk goes like this and goes back to give a little bit of depth, maybe show a little bit more of the back. And then this trunk, this trunk goes out to the side and this goes to the top and this comes out. So you can see the triangle this way, right? So that's the direction you wanna go. And so now I'll do the next level of cutting and to get to the design that I have in mind. But before I do that, um, I, I should do that first. And then I will cut off the bottom. So with that in mind then, I'll start butchering up the tree. Okay, so this is the front. This will be more on top apex. So this tree will have a trunk in the back, this, this part. And then this one comes out this way. And this goes in the back to give it more depth. And then this is the top. And then this comes out, the triangle. This will come down. Uh, maybe not. Maybe this will go up, this will come down. Okay, let me, let me uh, start working on it. Okay, um, I recall when I got this tree, it got a big branch coming out, a big root coming out like this. And I cut it about six months ago. For sure the bottom has come out, but even the side has come out. Uh, to heal over. And so it's quite okay to cut the roots quite uh, aggressively to shape, otherwise the tree will never look right. So now with that in mind, uh, I will now cut this tree using my reciprocal saw to kind of like this depth uh, and maybe go in a little bit more where the trees are, where the, uh, the roots are aggressive. You see the bottom is actually full of roots, like these big roots that are gonna take up space uh, rather to turn it into a fibrous roots uh, so that to feed the tree. So with that in mind then, I'll start chopping. Oh. <laughs> Looks like I broke the blade and it's a $2 blade, so it's no big deal. So that's a good thing about reciprocal saw. Uh, you can uh, be quite careless with it and it doesn't cost much and get the job done. That's the main thing. A big root like that only have that little feeder roots. So it doesn't hurt much to cut it off when you're considering you have all the other feeder roots nearby like this. And then like this one, it's taking up space unnecessarily either, and it's causing a lot of grief. So I will actually go a little bit deeper and cut this part off as well, but save these fibrous roots. And I'll go down from there on uh, to create more room for the uh, bonsai pots. I actually don't need to do it all at once because I'm gonna put it back in the growing pots again. So in fact, maybe I should just uh, cut a little bit and quit because uh, she should uh, be player safe a little bit. Don't cut off too much roots. You can see all those fibrous roots will be feeding. Well, um, I, I can cut off a little bit more but the fact that because I just really want to have those fibrous roots at the bottom doesn't matter. But um, I don't need to do it all at once. I'll do it, uh, let's say six months from now when this will be grown more and I will decide what to do with the next, uh, at the next stage. Like this can definitely go. You can see someday I would like to make these roots grow out so that the roots look like that. And this one here, 
is coming down this way, but it's going to the side to go underneath of this, which is not very desirable. In fact, it curls around to go all the way around. So what I would do is that next time when I do it, I would cut this off to kill all of this and then maybe not even take it out, but just let it rot in place. And then so that the roots will go out like this and like this and go out like this, it'd be nice. So it's really essential that you work on the roots first to make sure, because you can change it afterwards. You know, even 50 years later, it's still the same. So with that in mind then, now I will now start to cut the trees. Uh, now that I've decided the design, I will cut the trees to conform. And like these stumps, I, don't, stumps, I do not need to worry about it because they will just dry out to be very easy to remove later, uh, like these stumps. The main thing is now uh, placement of the branches so they were thicken accordingly uh, to fulfill the design of the tree. Now, when I cut it last time, I was quite deliberate to let this one grow to become the apex. So in fact, that's what I would do. I would cut off this one to encourage this one grow to become the top apex. Oh, in fact, uh, this could be the apex. You see how this nice is right at the top? And so this doesn't matter, it's very thin. So this could go up like this and I cut this off, make this come down this way and then you have a nice top uh, for the, uh, the top, the apex design. So with let that in mind then, let me just quickly cut off the rest of it and put it back in the growing pot so that we can uh, get an update about six months from now. So you cut off all the redundant uh, to compens uh, branches to compensate for the uh, loss of the, uh, the leaves. And I think, uh, you don't need something that close to the main trunk. Um, this one, just in case you need a branch here, you just leave it alone for now. And you actually want to thin off as much as you can to uh, expose the trunk because that is the structure. Uh, someday you like to see the structure of the tree rather than a big lump. And you don't need these uh, branches that near the trunk. Now, this is gonna be an interesting discussion because this is the side and this goes to the side, it's fine. But this one is actually too close to the, this part and it will run into the bottom one. So I actually cut this part off. And uh, given that uh, I hate to mess up uh, with the reciprocal saw, it cuts too fast. Uh, I would therefore use a uh, hand saw so that I can cut it uh, gradually. Stub will go, and this will be the branch and coming out. So I probably don't uh, need these that much, so let me cut off a little bit of that. And I probably don't need this branch. I, I would like this branch to go down, so I'll just cut it off. Oh, I take a big, bigger. I want to see this branch coming up and coming out this way. And so I'm cutting these off. Basically, I want to thin out around the main trunk so that the main trunk will be visible later on. And this branch, I can decide. So I cut it here so uh, when it comes out, I have, I have more options to decide the training. So when in doubt, uh, give yourself some option. So you can see my decision-making process in decision, deciding what to cut off is pretty easy. When in doubt, I leave a bud so that the bud will shoot out to give me options later on. So if I'm not sure, if I'm sure, then I cut it off. So for example, there's a branch going out this way, a branch going out this way, but there's a little branch going in between. 
the tree grows naturally, this will be girded eventually because most of the feeding will go to the other two sides and this one will die. So you must well cut it off so that you can see the trunk better. And then, uh, of course, too long, you cut it off, so on and so forth. So the decision can be very quick. I'm not doing it mindlessly, but really based on what the nature predicts, the, trunk, the tree will grow. And then I do the clip and grow. And of course, you know that when there's a bud going this way, then we, a branch will shoot out that way. So I'm really in anticipation of what it will become. The option will give me the next time to find the uh, order out of the order, uh, orderliness, uh, disorderliness. Like this branch will never make it, so Masa cut it off uh, so that this will go out nicely and clean uh, to let you see the trunk. And like these little guys on the side of the trunk will never work. In the sense, in the long run, uh, they, they don't contribute to the design. So you just get rid of them and clean off as much as you can so you can see the main structure of your design. So for example, I want this branch to go that way, which is nice. And then this branch is uh, coming out this way. And then this one is coming up. The coming up is kind of out of the design. Uh, I think it's okay to have this one coming up and then this one goes out. And so likelihood is that I don't need this branch. to give it a little bit more openness to see the trunk. And then someday I will cut off this one and let this one take over. So this one comes out this way, this one comes out this way, and then this one, it's a little bit too high. So I'll probably cut it off here. So this one comes out that way. So you form that triangle. So basically you can see this trunk goes in the back, this one trunk goes this way, and then this one comes up, it kind of bumps into this one. So, but on the other hand, if you cut off this part, this will want to come out, so this one doesn't kind of bump into this one, the view-wise. So that's what I would do. I will cut off uh, this one and see what happens, and the next time I will even cut off further, but I'll just cut off the top part for now. So you can see now, instead of this tree being here, kind of blocking the, the one behind it, right? I cut it, you know, blocking this branch. I cut it off, now this is open. And if I cut off these and let this one grow out this way and this one grow out that way, it's really nice. So with that in mind then, I would probably cut off a little bit of this. And this is an example, this branch is in between these two and that would never really make it. And this one is going down. And uh, this one I cover, I'll leave some bud for it to grow out. Now, you can see if I cut it over here, this one may shoot out a branch this way, it would look really nice, right? I can maybe even wire a little bit to encourage to go out this way, whereas this one goes out this way and I'll cut off this one. And hopefully, this will come out to fill this void. And look at how nice this, this is now, the tree. And, and I think I let this come up. So I don't need this step to be quite that high. I cut it off. And I want it to go out. So I cut off these branches so it'll branch out. And I'll cut off the snob later when it's dried out. Uh, no hurry to, to do the detail work. Right now, it's just a big picture of the first time. Now, all of these, I think they're fairly useless because you're, you're concentrating looking at the top. And frankly, this tree can be planted like this. You can see how it's hovering. And sometimes you can put a piece of rock there to make it into against the rock, which you see in some bonsai. This would be a really nice tree out of just out of a tree that somebody wants to throw it away. So that's what you do to turn a, uh, a, uh, a old tree stump uh, into a nice bonsai in fairly quick order. I would say five years from now, 
uh, those will be a uh, sure bonsai. People will just ooh and ah about it. In the meantime, and then the trunk will start to turn black uh, as uh, some of these areas you can see are starting to turn black as it age. So it'll be a really nice tree that people will treasure or I will treasure uh, as an heirloom. And this, uh, since this is the bottom, I think I just let it go just in case uh, it can turn into something. So this is pretty much it. Let me clean out this side. This part is a little bit problematic because that is the, the big trunk and this one is going this way. So I need to uh, butcher that next time so that uh, uh, it doesn't do that. In fact, this is really out of, out of place. So someday it will be like this, but, uh, and this one is also uh, going the sidewards. So the main thing is that we can do it as a, this is the trunk, uh, the front. You can see this tree's got a nice curve going up with the trunk going behind, but this part is really problematic. So quite possibly I'll clean up these roots and maybe force this roots to grow this way, like even next time. And, and I also could hide it with a rock, like leaning against a rock. Look at this, how beautiful this. You can see from this angle, see how this tree, very natural, this comes out. You know, this comes this way, this goes that way. Uh, it really would be beautiful. And this curve is just beautiful. So you, I created a something out of nothing. And like this is not right because this, this root goes all the way from here to here. So I'll cut it off, but next time, not now, because I want to save the uh, fibrous root to save the tree. So with that in mind, uh, I will go find a pot for it uh, it will take me two minutes and uh, position it to see if it looks right. I'll bring two pots in. So now uh, if I put this tree in here, look at that, beautiful. So let me try this pot. John Naka's rule is quite simple and makes a lot of sense. The tree need to be a little taller than the, the, the length of the pot. And the trunk need to be about the depth so that it doesn't look out of, si out of shape. That's a theory, but in practice, that may or may not be optimum. So I will try another one uh, just to see which one I like better to give myself a choice. And what I can do is that I can put it in front, see what I think, and that's not bad either, you see? And this is a little bit thinner than the trunk, but this is a kind of a Bunjin style a shallow pot, so it's also acceptable. So you can see uh, this tree, you can put in different kinds of pots uh, depending on your taste. Okay, uh, summarize, I have uh, butchered up this tree. Uh, this is the apex, it's not very thick now, but it will thicken in about six months to decent size, and if I let it grow, uh, in a year, it will rhyme with this uh, trunk size. And so what I would like to do is that, to summarize uh, what I have done, like these little snubs, I will just ignore for now because it's very easy to carve away. It would just become an interesting rotten feature later on. So when you dig up a tree like this um, from the wilderness or from your garden, uh, I prefer to do a bigger trunk because then you can start with something bigger, more uh, uh, visible at a distance. And in this case, this tree was grown in a uh, backyard for probably a volunteer seedling. That's probably for about 10 years. And then it was stuck up. It was really a big mess. The guy didn't know what to do with it. Uh, he was going to throw it away. And I said, uh, sell it to me. So I bought it for not much money. But you can see now it's a magnificent tree with a right curve by creating, by manipulating the branch, picking the branches, sort of selecting uh, order out of uh, chaos. And when you have lemon, you make lemonade, you don't fight it. You select what's available and make the best of it. And you work over time, it will become a magnificent tree. And so if you take a tree from the wilderness, the first step you do is that don't, don't fool too much with the, fool around with the roots too much. 
because you need all the roots to save the tree. So what I suggest for in most cases, uh, plant the tree in a combination of 50-50 pea moss and vermiculite, no, I'm sorry, uh, perlite and vermiculite, or two parts perlite, one part vermiculite, and let them root out first. Like this one has been rooted out for six months or nine months. So there's a lot of fibrous roots. And then I cut off the bottom because I don't need to, because I need to get the process ready uh, to get into a bonsai pot Sunday. And I didn't cut off all of it. I could have cut off more. I wanted to cut off more, but I want to leave it alone. Now you can see, I select the branches that will give me the design. So you study it, study it, study it until you find the design that you like and do it with some degree of vision, what the end can become. The branch is very short now, but it's coming out of here and a very tiny, but I want a branch here. So I want it to come out and grow to be a big branch. Well, you just let it grow and don't fool with it until it's fairly good size. This is a very small apex. It doesn't matter because if I let it grow, it will become a very big apex, which is comparable to what I need, uh, compatible with what I need. And plant it in, and when you're ready to work the second phase after it's all a lot of fibrous roots like what I'm doing now, and then um, do some drastic cutting because otherwise you will never get there. And you wanna cut off the desi undesirable branches early to give time for the desirable branches to grow. It would take, like say, three to five years for this tree to be a magnificent tree. And I will really keep you posted by uh, posting this every six months or three months even, uh, because the initial growth can be quite spectacularly fast, but uh, eventually it becomes a bonsai. And I hope you'll join me on this journey. I enjoy doing the bonsai show with you. And I encourage to well, like my radio and comment below because then I get the feedback to see how you can see I do even better and uh, what else I can do to please you more in terms of what you need to know. You know, uh, subscribe to our channel so that we can keep abreast of uh, other uh, videos that we we'll do. In fact, I wasn't gonna do this elm tree, uh, oak tree until somebody wrote a question to say, have you ever done an oak tree? Well, here I am. Uh, a week later, I'm doing an oak tree. So I have a lot of flexibility of addressing your needs. Now the next step I would do is to put this one back in the bones, uh, growing pot, and six months later, we'll try that again and maybe try to put it back in the bonsai pot. Maybe you'll be ready for the bonsai pot. Okay, for time fine tuning. So thank you very much for watching. And again, like and click uh, to subscribe our channel, okay? Thank you. Bye. Okay, so this is getting close to the final stage. You can see this one will come out this way, like to about here. This one will go out this way, and this one will go out even further. Now, this one is a little bit of problematic, and this will be the apex going up, and these will be going down. This is a little bit problematic because in, at a distance, it's really like a they call it a bar branch where the tree growing out like a stretch arm. So what I would do is I'll actually cut off this part. Very brutal. And now this one, it's not really going out the same because I'm gonna play with this to maybe go out this way to fill out this hole. So this would be a really, really nice tree. So uh, notice this part is black, the bark, and uh, crinkly uh, breaking up like uh, corking. And this will gradually migrate as these parts gets older. So the whole tree will have the old appearance. So that's why it's always good to start with the old tree because you have the old appearance to start.